Hey everybody, my name is Pixel and welcome back to another episode of Selene Apoptosis. Now Ethan hit hope because she changed her hair and her color and she looked like Selene. And at one moment hope turned into this black eyed creature. We don't know what's going on here, but hopefully this episode has some answers for us. Your scum, Ethan. Worthless scum. Ethan turned off the tap and stared at his reflection in a large mirror. A few drops of water trembled on the tip of his nose and chin. Oh no! He f broke the mirror. He's, he's punching everything now. Oh god, nobody's safe. Now that was a proper punch. Sir, I'm sorry, but we... Sir, are you okay? You have blood oozed from his split lip. Ethan wiped it with the back of his hand. Yes, yes, I'm fine. Sorry, I didn't mean to keep you. He smiled. The fresh wound got swollen with blood again. A red blot spread across his face, just as it should. Dude, what in the world? Why? Why'd you punch the mirror, Ethan? Ethan didn't lie to the waiter. He really was fine. Maybe not in the same manner as before, but the gears in his head were starting to move again. When he got home, Mr. Merleys had already left. Turned out that he didn't even take the keys from the neighbors. At first, Ethan assumed Mr. Merleys could cancel the visit, but as soon as he opened the door, his doubts disappeared. A strong, unfamiliar scent was filling the hallway. It could be Mr. Merleys' cologne, or maybe the smell of the apartment itself, with Hope's presence faded away. Mr. Merleys must have taken his daughter's keys. Somehow, the possibility never crossed Ethan's mind before. He drew in the air through his nostrils and suddenly felt as sharp and as clear in the dream he had days ago. Something was going to happen. Ethan looked around the empty dark room and reached for the phone. Was it to perform the ritual, or was he hoping something would go different this time? Short beeps. Nope, she's still not picking up, Ethan. Ethan thought it was safe to say something was already happening. He only had to figure what and where and when and who and who creepy paintings. Something had changed in the picture and it's not that Hope's favorite's blouse is missing from the closet. If you find the difference, you win. If you find the difference, you'll know where the gears are taking you. Is it into the cold blackness of this character's heart? The Holloway. Pot-bellied bowls on the dresser, full of gibberish and dust. Oh, see, seems normal to me. The kitchen. Eyeballs. There's eyeballs into, into paintings now. An uneven row of glass jars on a shelf. An empty coffee maker bearing dry blackness at the bottom. Spoons, forks, and knives. Some of them really sharp. The bathroom. A mirror on the wall, and in the reflection, the closed door is open. No, not here. What about... Ethan licked his split lip. Yes, that's it. He has to check his email. Now. What's it going to be in your email, Ethan? Ethan was looking carefully. Seemed like a lot of time had passed. His mailbox was full of various emails, but Ethan barely glanced at the names. He was looking for something special. And what was special about, say, letters from the agency that were gradually becoming more and more concerned. At some point, concern turned into cold and aggressive. Ethan idly skimmed through the notice of the contract termination. Not what he was looking for. He started with the oldest emails and scanned the list all the way to the top. Nothing. Maybe he's looking in the wrong place. Maybe there's just nothing to look for. Maybe we're all just going crazy here. No. Something is happening. He only has to figure what and where and who and why and whom. Ethan got so close to the accurate answer to those questions that the light of new knowledge could have burned out his eyes. Burn the eyes, Ethan. At the top of the list was an untitled letter. Maybe Ethan missed it the first time, or maybe it just wasn't there before. The sender was the same writer Ethan had volunteered to help, completely free of charge. Ethan's lungs turned into a deflated pool ball. He clicked on the name of the letter without a name. Of course the letter actually had a name. Mail clients carefully add untitled to the empty line, just in case you're losing it when you type your email because something got out of that open door in the bathroom mirror. That poor guy begged Ethan to come. The mail said he couldn't sleep. He was scared, exhausted, and didn't know who else to ask. 
Something will get him very soon if he won't figure anything out. He didn't know if it was related to the work he was doing. He didn't know how to drive away what he had settled in his house. He only knew that something enormously hungry was looking at him from the darkness. You know what I mean, right? Ethan knew. By the time he finished reading the letter, Ethan already knew what he should do. What was that? No, we're, we're going to answer the call. We ain't no bitch. The acquaintance didn't know if it at all ha had any relation to the work he was doing. But what about Ethan's work? Could his research shed light on what lay dormant in the dark and awaken it? Was it Ethan's avid curiosity or the question that teased its appetite? Which one was cursed, the chicken or the egg? I don't know that. I don't think that's how that question goes. Ethan was angry, angry as hell. He wanted to end it, all of it, once and for all. He wanted to face his fear, even if the fear was no longer his own, even if it was crawling through the wires and climbing communication towers to breathe out its noxious spores into the air. That's taking a bit extreme, Ethan. But you know what? This whole thing is... Oh, no. Eyeballs are back. Ethan was angry, but also terrified. What he wanted to think was a delusion took root and grew stronger as he tried to deceive himself. It was as incorporeal as the emails in his mailbox, yet at the same time as real. Was it to have anything to do with the eyeballs in the paintings? Ethan wanted to face the fear so that it would take shape and name a box in which that fear could fit. Maybe then he could have really dealt with it. You're going to deal with this fear one way or another, Ethan. Either you're going to take it or it's going to take you. That's why when Ethan got behind the wheel of his old sedan, he wasn't doing it for the rider who was tormented by shadows. He was doing it for himself. Where are we going, Ethan? Huh? In the email, the acquaintance described in detail how to find his house and how to get inside. Too much detail, as if he had already resigned to his fate. Something would get to him very soon, and he won't figure anything out. This is just a notice, Mr. Harrison. A notice of life termination. This happens when you look into the abyss for too long. Oh no, it's an eyeball. But looking isn't enough, is it? No, looking is never enough. You shine a flashlight into it, throw stones, and whistle frantically, like a vandal who managed to get into an abandoned house. And then you smash up the place. You're excited and terrified, and then only terror remains as you realize the door has slammed shut behind you, and the handle won't budge. Uh-oh. Ethan, I think this is that something you were waiting for. This thought made Ethan speed up, and then, just as abruptly, to hit the brakes. The wheels let out a short, hysterical shriek. The car swerved and stopped on the side of the road. The pat blood was pounding in his ears. Ethan's breath came in short gasps, his eyes searching blindly in the dark. After calming down a little, Ethan pretended, who was, to, who was he trying to fool? The night row was empty. He was examining his navigator, but there was but not one thought in his head. Oh, really? Is it, is it the eyeballs? Is it the eyeballs, Ethan? What is he doing? What the hell is he doing? Seems like he asked out loud. There was no one to answer. It's not too late to turn back. Turn the car around, go back to the city, to the apartment. Lie down on the sofa and sleep, sleep, sleep until the morning comes. In the morning, he will call Hope again and the thought was cut short. Actually, it didn't lead anywhere from the very beginning. A dead end. The truth was, he had no place or reason to go back. He wanted to go back to the past and that task was beyond him or his old Toyota. In the present, he had nothing left but the granite gray road ahead and the decision to go. If he hurried, he might still be able to help. Who? Are we helping our acquaintance? What kind of mess is our acquaintance in, Ethan? The car slowly took off. The rest of the way, and there wasn't much left, Ethan was thinking about his acquaintance. Or were they friends? Probably. You don't take acquaintances for a journey to the bottom of the abyss, do you? Well, some you do. Ethan was thinking about his friend and how long he'd been awake in particular. It had been, Ethan had glanced on the phone in the open glove box, quite a long time. A month or so, judging by the emails. It's been a whole month, Ethan. This guy's probably long gone. How long can a person stay awake? The question followed his car silently. Yes, Ethan. How long could they stay awake? You should know. You should know you have trouble sleeping. Ethan drove into the suburbs and turned the car around on Deputy Road. The 25 mile per hour speed limit road sign at the bend of the road seemed as white as an old bone. 
Yeah, bleached by the sun or the moonlight. Ethan turned down Sycamore Street. The lawn in front of the house was eight. Front of house eight was overgrown with tall grass, so tall as if it hadn't been touched for. How long can a person stay awake? Ethan thought it was probably the rainy weather. He didn't remember much of the past week, but he was pretty sure about the rain. Even now, the ground was still damp and springy underfoot. Yes, it must be the rain. Humidity makes grass grow faster. Yes, with all that extra water. When he got out of the car, a shadow detached from the trees near the house. Ethan stiffened and then eased a moment later. The figure quickly walked away along the narrow concrete path. Just a passerby. Ethan watched him go. The concrete beneath his boots gave way to gravel. Ethan walked past a sprawling hemlock covered with rosettes of small white flowers. The bush reached up to mid-thigh. All of the windows were dim, no lights anywhere. The house stood a little way off, dark, quiet, and still as the night itself. Almost like the house was slumbering along with its host. For a moment, Ethan felt stupid and was about to turn back to the car, but he stayed after all. He was invited. No, not that. He was called for help, which is kind of like an invitation. Maybe and his friend got a little too stressed, and that's all. Induced delusional disorder in all its glory. Maybe Ethan was desperate to be needed, so he jumped at the chance to be someone's savior. Perhaps his unfortunate friend had finally fallen asleep, and disturbing him was a bad decision overall. Well, Ethan was fine with that. He just wanted to make sure everything was okay. Ethan firmly knocked on the door. No one answered, neither the first time nor the third. Ah, but somebody probably answered on the second time. No lights came on in any of the rooms, and there was no sound between the door. One of the windows on the second floor was open. Ethan moved away from the porch and tried to take a better look. No movement. The house was asleep, and its sleep resembled torpor. Ethan himself came to think that he might be dreaming. But if two people share the same dream, is it any different from reality? Slowly, as if that really was a dream, Ethan went to the flower tub the letter had mentioned and took the spare key from its hiding place. Just as slowly, he returned to the door. The key rattled three times in the lock and the door drifted inward into the darkness. Don't do it, Ethan. Don't do it. At the top of the stairs leading to the second floor, there sat a cat. Ethan tried to call out to it, but the cat didn't move, still watching him with bright, round eyes. Ethan plunged into the darkness of the house. The darkness and the stench were almost one and the same here. This house looks familiar. <gasps> Wait. This is the guy from the start of the game. We're in his house now. The smell, unbearably thick, dense, wrapped the house in a suffocating shroud. Ethan tried not to think about where it was coming from. Instead, he thought of Selene, or rather, her dark counterpart, Hecate. The, de the ancient Greeks believed that she appears in the form of a dog. But dogs were sacrificed to her, weren't they? Better turn the light on. What are we going to find when we turn the light on? It was really better to, but Ethan couldn't gather enough courage to do it. Dogs are the natural enemy of cats. Light is the natural enemy of darkness. Life is the natural enemy of death. And what wish could be more natural than a wish to destroy your natural enemy? Ethan stumbled over something. He looked down. Oh, damn. What is that? A hand was peeking out from behind the kitchen counter, blackened and swollen. Of course, Ethan would have seen more if he had a flashlight. Somehow, Ethan wasn't surprised. As if it's him, not his friend, who had long ago resigned to his fate. You have received a notice of life termination. It suddenly dawned on him. Madness, curse, and death are contagious, and this is not a dark age superstition, but an actual law of reality. Selene, Hecate, Artemis... Madness, curse, and death. Here lies the accurate answer, as accurate as it gets. The answer has three faces, and he himself wished to look into each of them. Ding. A sound of bright grass breaking in the hall. But it wasn't a window collapsing. The light bulbs. Someone was smashing the light bulbs with a bat, one by one. The sound was getting closer. Ethan closed his eyes. Good night. Wow. Wow, there is six endings to this 
game. What in the world? That, that was cool. Or, however, maybe there's more. Maybe we can change our fate with just one simple choice. So, I'm going to leave that for the next episode, though. Who in the world was laying on the ground motionless in there? Who was that? I guess I guess we'll never really find out, though. You know, unless we go for a different ending. We got ending six of six. I gotta wonder, what are the other endings to this game? We're not gonna do all six of them. That would be really... <laughs> that would be really tedious, I feel. But... I'm going to leave it off right here for today, and we're going to come back to this next time. I loved what this story did. It was freaky. It was creepy. It had all the makings of a great story. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed what you saw, feel free to like the video. You want to see more content like this, other videos I've done, follow along with this story. Subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell. Thank you guys again for watching. I'll see you in the next episode. Bye now.